another session of oral medicine and radiology series. Today we will be dealing with leukoplakia. Leukoplakia is derived from two different words, leuko which means white and plakia which means patch. So simply put together it means a white patch. Leukoplakia was earlier considered to be an oral pre-malignant lesion but now it comes under oral potentially malignant disorders. So, uh, when we look into the history part, we see that uh, it was earlier called as smoker's patch. So, this clearly points out to the role of tobacco or smoking as one of the causes for leukoplakia. Okay. So, this term leukoplakia that we still continue to use today was coined by Schwarmer in 1877. Coming to the definition, I've added two definitions, one by WHO in 1984, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory, and uh, this is the more recent one, okay. Okay, coming to the definition, uh, it goes like this, a white patch or plaque that can, that cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other disease and which is not associated with any physical or chemical agent except the use of tobacco. So it clearly points out towards tobacco being the causative agent for leukoplakia. And uh, this is the more recent one. It goes like this. A predominantly white lesion of the oral mucosa that cannot be characterized as any other definable lesion, some oral leukoplakia will transform into cancer. Coming to the etiology. So etiology can uh, broadly uh, divide into local, systemic and uh, idiopathic. Coming to the local factors, uh, it includes tobacco, alcohol, chronic irritation, UV rays, chemicals like sanguinaria, electrogalvanic reactions, candidiasis, viruses like uh, maybe HPV, serostomia. And then under systemic, we have syphilis, nutrition deficiencies like vitamin B12, folic acid, vitamin A and iron deficiency, iron deficiencies. And then you have hormones or hormonal variations in genetics especially uh, that involved with p53 uh, gene mutation of p53 gene then we have idiopathics <coughs> so now let's uh, delve into the details come on coming to tobacco uh, both the smokeless form of tobacco as well as the form of tobacco which can be smoked both of them are uh, attributed towards uh, leukoplakia formation. However, uh, smoking forms of tobacco are more uh, prone to produce uh, tobacco, especially when you have uh, forms like BD, where you don't have filter when compared to cigarette. Uh, uh, here you have more of a generalized appearance of leukoplakia, whereas uh, in smokeless forms of tobacco, we have a more localized form uh, of uh, leukoplakia or, or a particular lesion because uh, here you actually place it in the vestibule or a particular area where here uh, whereas uh, in uh, smoking forms you actually uh, hold the smoke in your mouth for some time so it is more generalized and here it is localized coming to alcohol uh, though alcohol doesn't directly produce uh, uh, leukoplakia it has a synergistic effect uh, by that i mean that uh, it works along with tobacco and potentiates uh, the role of tobacco it actually uh, increases the chances for uh, leukoplakia formation um, when uh, tobacco is used alone when compared to uh, when tobacco is used alone okay so when you are using alcohol it uh, actually dehydrates the mucosa and makes it more permeable and porous so that uh, the same toxins that we see here uh, can be absorbed by the oral mucosa more easily okay and uh, Another uh, factor which has been uh, considered uh, to promote dysplastic features or promote malignant transformation uh, is that, you know, in long time uh, alcoholism, uh, your liver is damaged and hence uh, the capacity of liver to detoxify or remove the toxins from the body is again compromised and hence we have uh, more uh, tendency towards malignancy okay? that has also been uh, discussed coming to chronic irritation like uh, ill-fitting dentures sharp broken teeth jacked ends or sharp edges of uh, uh, you know, 
dentures or roots or pieces of teeth all these can be or even malocclusion can be uh, causative factors in candidiasis uh, candidiasis when associated with leukoplakia uh, is called as uh, candidial leukoplakia and this particular type of leukoplakia or uh, this particular combination is more deadlier uh, than leukoplakia alone or it has more malignant uh, transformation rate than uh, leukoplakia alone that's because uh, you know when uh, there is leukoplakia the mucosa becomes a little more rough and you know it's not as smooth as normal mucosa so there is colonization of uh, candida and then uh, when nitrosamines are produced that actually uh, prolongs uh, the leukoplakia or you know increases the duration of leukoplakia and even uh, in, in increases the malignancy tendency or uh, the transformation rate of leukoplakia okay then there is electrogalvanism so this uh, particular thing was uh, a thing of the past uh, because earlier we used to have different uh, metal crowns okay? uh, so there was always always uh, possibility of electrogalvanism but now uh, since we use uh, ceramic or uh, zirconia we don't have this problem in ultraviolet radiation again uh, some exposed areas like lower lip and vermilion water lip are involved sanguine area again uh, this is also a little bit uh, outdated uh, in traditional american uh, medicine uh, this particular perennial flowering plant sanguine area was used for uh, various treatment so that was associated with uh, you know white patch formation in the oral cavity especially if your vestibular area so now that is no more of importance okay. and uh, viruses like hpv especially uh, 16 and 18 subjects are also uh, associated with leukoplex coming to nutrition deficiencies like vitamin a b complex and folic acid and uh, and deficiency all these have also been attributed towards leukoplakia formation uh, increases of sensitivity towards leukoplakia then we have hormonal variations especially in uh, women so uh, you know women are uh, or female sex is more uh, prone for malignant transformation than uh, male sex even though males are more prone to leukoform leukoplakia formation because they use uh, or they smoke more than women or they are considered to smoke more than women uh, they are uh, people who have more chance for getting leukoplakia however uh, the female sex is associated with more malignant transformation disease and coming to genetic factors uh, the p53 uh, gene uh, which is a tumor suppressor gene uh, is uh, you know because of mutations for uh, because of mutations on uh, p53 gene you have uh, uh, propensity towards the complete information or malignant transformation okay then there is an idiopathic form uh, where uh, you know tobacco is not associated with the complete information so even i myself had a patient where uh, the patient was or had never used tobacco, but still he had hypoplasia. So he was very resistant towards normal treatment. Okay, even uh, this type of hypoplasia is more uh, prone to malignant transformation than when compared to uh, the forms we are more aware of, that is tobacco associated hypoplasia. Coming to the classification of hypoplasia, there are various classifications of hypoplasia. But basically, all these classification involve uh, mainly two forms, that is homogeneous and non-homogeneous. Uh, homogeneous uh, type of leukoplakia means the lesion is more or less uh, uniform and, uh, you know, one part of that lesion appears almost similar or, you know, is almost uniform when compared to the other part of the lesion. But in non-homogeneous types, you see that, uh, you know, one particular uh, part of the lesion is not exactly like the other part. You may have a little more thicker aspect there. Or maybe a mix of red there, so that is the non homogeneous part. And again, um, non homogeneous leukoplakia uh, can be subdivided into various types. So, here we have another classification uh, based on etiology and clinical appearance. In etiology, it is idiopathic, 
and tuberculosis is typically publicly and clinical again homogeneous and non homogeneous and under non homogeneous you have erosive nodular and varicose types and uh, this is a more recent one where again you have similar non homogeneous and homogeneous subtypes and here you have the erythroleukoplakia type 2 which comes again under non homogeneous type uh, where uh, it is a mixture of both leukoplakia as well as erythroplakia or uh, white interspersed with uh, red okay coming to the clinical features of uh, leukoplakia you see that males are more affected than females maybe because of uh, habit of smoking or tobacco usage and then uh, age uh, you can have right from the young age maybe you can uh, come around 40 40 is the age where you can uh, see leukoplakia okay uh, coming to the location you can see uh, leukoplakia occur in the buccal mucosa the commissural mucosa alveolar mucosa tongue hard palate and soft palate porous mammoth and gingiva all these uh, point more towards uh, smoked forms of tobacco and whereas in sorry smoked forms of uh, tobacco usage whereas in non-smoked forms or smokeless forms of tobacco you have more in the vestibular region okay so buccal mucosa is the most uh, commonly associated area okay. whereas these both areas floor of the mouth and uh, the lateral border of the tongue are danger areas or those areas are more uh, prone to malignant transformation so when you have leukoplakic lesion or uh, you know leukoplakia associated with the lateral border of the tongue or the floor of the mouth you need to be extra cautious extra careful okay and coming to the clinical appearance you have a lot of uh, clinical appearances uh, the classic appearance is called as uh, cracked mud appearance or dried mud appearance and uh, okay that is usually seen in the buccal mucosa or the tongue whereas uh, this particular pattern ebbing tide type or the ebbing tide uh, pattern or appearance is usually seen in the floor of the mouth where you have certain grooves or furrows usually associated with uh, the receding tides you know the markings you see on the sand when the tide recedes so that is called as ebbing tide pattern and that is usually seen in the floor of the mouth okay. but, um, coming to the various stages uh, this particular stage or pre leukoplakic stages when you have a thin white uh, filmy kind of uh, appearance not exactly a uh, a homogeneous appearance a, a small you know a thin appearance a thin coating okay you can tell now that is called as a pre leukoplakic or a smooth leukoplakic stage pre leukoplakic stage okay okay this is the proper uh, you know classic uh, appearance what you see it's called as a homogeneous appearance or a fissured leukoplakia okay uh, so here you see the classic sign of leukoplakia, the classic sign of uh, so the classic appearance of homogeneous leukoplakia, which is called as a cracked mud appearance. So this appearance is quite similar to uh, that of dried mud. Okay, the, the uh, cracks that you see in, uh, see on the fields after uh, it completely dries. That's called as a cracked mud appearance. Okay. So you can see that this particular area is very similar to this particular area and for that matter this particular area so it's it's quite uniform to us so this is called as homogeneous appearance so here also you can see so this particular appearance is almost similar to that of here and that here also so you can see that it's almost uniform so that's why it's called as a homogeneous appearance okay so coming to uh, the non-homogeneous forms so you have nodular or granular forms so here you can see there is you know thin finger like projections or you know nodular appearances lot of furrows okay bulbous appearances so here you have a little more thinner sections okay here again very light section here a little more granular you can see that you know it's not very homogeneous it's it's not uniform right it has different appearances at different sections or different places so that's why it's called as a non-homogeneous leukoplakia okay so this is uh, another type of uh, non-homogeneous leukoplakia one of the dangerous types okay 
apart from uh, peripheral leaflet leukocytes, peripheral leaflet leukocytes. This is called as PVL or proliferative varicose leukocytes. So you have a lot of uh, finger-like projections or cauliflower-like projections, not exactly cauliflower, finger-like projections. Okay? Kind of poppy or something like that. Okay, again here also you can see that it's not very really homogeneous. We have like hairy or finger like projection. So this, this is called as a varicose leukoplasia. This is very dangerous. This is more prone towards uh, malignant transformation. And if you find a patient with this kind of appearance, you need to act fast. Uh, it's better to surgically treat this patient than stick on to medical anesthesia. Okay, and this is another very dangerous uh, form of leukoplakia, which is called a speckle leukoplakia or erythro leukoplakia. So you have uh, white interspersed with red. Okay, so mix of red and white is what is called as a speckle leukoplakia. So PVL for proliferative varicose leukoplakia and speckle leukoplakia are the most dangerous forms of leukoplakia. So both of these come under non homogeneous leukoplakia. Coming to the staging of leukoplakia. So you can stage uh, leukoplakia based on the size or the extent of leukoplakia, the site or uh, the areas involved, the clinical aspect or the clinical appearance and then the histopathological appearance. Okay. So uh, based on uh, the size, it can range from L1 to L3 or LX, L1 less than or equal to 2 cm, L2 2 to 4 cm, L3 greater than 4 cm and LX is not specified, the size is not specified and then site S1 to S2, S1 all sites excluding the floor of the mouth and the tongue and S2 is floor of the mouth and the tongue is also involved. So you can see that these are the dangerous areas, not the whole of the tongue but the lateral border of the tongue. Okay, that is a dangerous area and then the floor of the mouth. Okay. And SX is not specified and then clinical aspect uh, homogeneous, non-homogeneous and PX is not specified. And coming to histopathology features, uh, you have P1 to P4 where P1 is uh, you have no dysplasia, P2 means mild, P3 means moderate dysplasia, P4 means severe dysplasia and Px means it's not specified. So you can stage leukoplakia as uh, you know stage 1, 2, 3 and 4 based on various combinations of these. Uh, subsets or based on various combinations of the size, site, clinical appearance and the histopathological appearance. Okay. Uh, these are the histological features. I have included these uh, because uh, a little bit uh, later uh, we will be dealing with something which is called as chair side investigations where you know uh, if you look at these that might sound a little more easier for you to understand. So I have included all these things here. And these are the histological features. A small glance at this. Okay. Uh, you have uh, hyper or ortho para keratosis. Sorry, hyper ortho or para keratosis, acanthosis, and ballooning of cells. And dysplastic features which you need to be uh, careful about are basal cell hypoplasia, loss of basal cell polarity, cellular pleomorphism loss of stratification, enlarged or increased nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, increased mitotic activity, abnormal mito mitotic activity, hypochromatic nuclei, dyskeratosis, bulbous or uh, teardrop shaped retipex or epithelial ridges, and keratin or epithelial pearls, loss of typical epithelial cell cohesiveness or loss of attachment between cells. And in connective tissue, you have subepithelial lymphocytes in plasma cells, inflammatory cell infiltrates. Okay, all these are the dysplastic features we need to be aware of. Uh, various degrees of dysplasia can range from mild, moderate, severe, and carcinoma in situ. Coming to the differential diagnosis, uh, you have a lot of uh, topics or sorry, things, entities under uh, differential diagnosis. Lipedema is another normal variant. Uh, it is just uh, the epithelial cell hue of the oral mucosa, which uh, you know uh, slightly resembles leukoplakia. However, on stretching, you you see that the leukodema is completely 
uh, disappearing or it has vanished so it has no uh, you know um, relation to leukoplasia this is a normal variant and it has no association with tuberculosis Fractionic keratosis again uh, fractionic keratosis can resemble leukoplasia but uh, you always see that there is a sharp edge or a uh, jagged border or uh, any projecting part which is in contact to that area and that area will be a little bit localized okay and uh, it has no association with that of tobacco coming to uh, smokeless tobacco lesions you have tobacco quid lesions uh, tobacco pouch keratosis where again uh, you have a localized lesion and even sometimes the burns or the caustic uh, uh, you know burns of uh, slated line uh, while using um, BP leaf for chewing all those can also resemble your uh, leukoplasia at certain certain scale so that can also be um, recently seen then you have uh, lichen planus this particular lesion is uh, very different from that of leukoplasia. Uh, leukoplasia you have homogeneous or non-homogeneous appearance. Very nice. Lichen planus you have a striate appearance. So this appearance is called frequent uh, on a gene plate where you have series of interlacing white or velvety wild striate. Okay. And again, uh, this is again uh, immune mediated. That is, uh, leukoplasia is again um, tobacco induced. So, again, history plays a very important role. And we have uh, candidiasis. These forms of candidiasis. Again, for hand candidiasis to occur, you either need to have a poor oral hygiene or uh, your uh, immunity need to be compromised. Okay. Again, uh, these forms of uh, candidiasis can be spread off and they almost resemble pretty persistent. And you don't have a history of tobacco usage. So again, history and appearance can easily rule out these. The white cone fever is again uh, something which is related more to heredity or hereditary causes than uh, the tobacco. In white cone fever, you always have your uh, parents or grandparents having. This particular lesion, and you have this at a very young age, okay. So, more generalized appearance, and all that. Okay. That is, leukoplasia you can always associate it with, so you can always associate with uh, smoking or the uh, use of tobacco. Hairy leukoplasia again, uh, it, uh, it usually appears in, uh, it usually appears on the lateral borders of the tongue or on the tongue, but it is not a tobacco induced lesion, uh, it is not leukoplasia. For that matter, it's actually a lesion which is caused by Epstein Barr virus, which is a spike and you know maybe a little bit like leukoplasia at certain stage, but it can easily be uh, again uh, differentiated by history uh, as well as um, proper uh, diagnosis. Uh, again, uh, hairy look of like Epstein Barr virus lesions also occur in patients uh, who have poor immunity. Okay. Then, Verica vulgaris, is, uh, sorry, Verica vulgaris, it is more uh, of a generalized lesion. You have more skin lesions uh, than oral lesions. And again, uh, oral lesions are more red or you know, warty kind of uh, in appearance. Whereas in leukoplakia, you have more homogeneous or non homogeneous. You don't have that typical warty appearance warty appearance here okay and uh, you have more of white than red and coming to uh, DLE or oral discoid lupus erythematosus this is actually predominantly a skin lesion than an oral lesion and uh, this is again immune mediated rather than tobacco induced and again uh, in DLE you have a uh, red uh, lesion or a red pore which is surrounded by white and then striae radiating from that whereas in leukoplakia you have a homogeneous appearance or a crack mud appearance or even for that matter if you consider uh, an erythro leukoplakia you have white and red interspersed you don't have this particular red core with the striae uh, white striae radiating appearance so you can distinguish 
that appearance and again maybe the history part the tobacco association and uh, the immunity okay and the skin diseases all those can be used to rule out uh, really when it comes to diagnosis okay coming to the diagnosis proper history and the uh, proper clinical examination is very necessary history involves uh, you know asking the patient regarding his habits especially uh, those associated with the use of tobacco both smoked or you say, sorry smokeless as well as uh, those with smoke okay so you need to ask that and when he says that he has this particular habit you need to ask about uh, you know the type the frequency the duration um, any other symptoms or signs any other treatment so whether he has still whether he has abstained from that or still is using that all those needs to be asked and clinical examination you need to examine all these areas not not exactly uh, only the buccal mucus but you need to examine the floor of the mouth lateral part of the tongue and all those uh, areas which might escape you know fast or a quick examination so because those are the areas uh, which are more prone to malignant transformation so those areas need to be uh, examined with great uh, what is observation okay yeah coming to chair side investigation so uh, earlier i happened to tell about dysplastic features so this is that so uh, these are the investigations which can be performed when uh, you know you have a small suspicion regarding any malignant transformation okay so this particular uh, investigation can be done just prior to your biopsy so many a time when the patient comes to you he is almost afraid of the word biopsy so you know just before doing a proper biopsy you can actually test for any dysplastic changes okay so usually you cannot identify dysplasia by uh, naked eye usually no you cannot identify dysplasia by naked eye so you need to uh, do a biopsy for proper cold standard analysis however this particular step can be used as a, a preceding step uh, just a step before a proper biopsy okay so if you find dysplasia here then you can proceed towards biopsy but if you don't find uh, dysplasia in that particular lesion site then you may actually delay biopsy for some more time or you may observe the patient until he you know, recovers or for any other change you know, towards malignancy or for that matter uh, any dysplastic changes uh, so these are the various uh, chair side investigations one is vital staining so you can use trolling glue or leucol siding a trolling glue is uh, again uh, the most commonly used method and then you have leucol siding too in trolling glue uh, actually the dysplastic area okay or the cells which uh, or the area of the lesion which undergoes dysplastic changes will retain the blue dye uh, even when uh, there is uh, acetic acid deep colorization done so even when you ask a patient to uh, you know when you do the decolorization using acetic acid this particular area where dysplasia is set in that retains the blue color dye and uh, this points out towards dysplasia and then uh, in leucol siding uh, you can use it separately or in combination with blue, in blue also so in leucol siding what you have is uh, in dysplastic cells uh, you it doesn't take up the stain whereas uh, non dysplastic areas okay, or the areas which are normal they turn brown or uh, brownish black so that is because there is that that those kind of tissues or those kind of cells have glycogen whereas dysplastic cells don't have glycogen or glycogen is depleted in, depleted in them so that doesn't take up the stain so this can be used for checking dysplasia okay then you have exfoliative cytology and oral cyto oral brush biopsy where you actually agitate or you know you rub uh, against the epithelial cells or sorry you rub against the epithelium or 
the bacterial mucosa for that matter and if uh, there is dysplasia um, you have you know the thing that we discussed earlier the loss of cohesiveness or the reduction in cohesiveness between cells so what happens is when you agitate the cells these cells get shed off so when they are uh, taken as a smear and examined you can see that there are various swiss plastic cells so this is also a method so this is an uh, easy method which is non invasive and it is painless procedure and uh, you know patients are more uh, willing to do these procedures than biopsy okay so there are again advanced uh, chair cell investigations where there is micronucleus test and VZ light okay micronucleus test is uh, you know uh, when you test uh, the smear or maybe the gargle or whatever for that matter for micronucleus so these are small fragments or particles of uh, nucleus or nuclear fragments which actually mean that there are more number of dysplastic cells there or that epithelium is dysplastic this is not uh, only done for leukoplakia it can be done for OSM or for um, lichen planus all these lesions it can be done and then you have uh, chemoluminescent elimination that is especially VZ light system. So here what you do is you ask the patient to um, use uh, acetic acid or uh, gargle with acetic acid and then you uh, shine a particular light of a particular frequency. This particular light is called as a VZ light. So the normal epithelium it takes up uh, this light or it absorbs the light whereas the dysplastic uh, epithelium with a lot of nucleus because there are a no, lot of cells there, there are a lot more nucleus and there is no more reflection of light. So you have a particular appearance which is called as an acetovite appearance. So that you see here. Okay. And then when all these uh, tear side investigations uh, yield or point towards uh, dysplasia, you need to take a proper biopsy so that you can confirm because all these things just point out towards dysplasia. It, it doesn't give a confirmatory diagnosis. The confirmation is always done by oral pathological investigation biopsy. So biopsy is the gold standard here. Okay. Coming to the management of leukoplakia, first and foremost is patient education and motivation. We need to educate the patient on uh, the ill effects of smoking and uh, motivate the patient to quit the habit or else even whatever uh, medication or treatment you do uh, will be of no use. And then we need to identify and remove any predisposing factors. Okay, uh, Maybe if there are sharp edges or jagged borders, you need to correct those. Any you know teeth which uh, are not in proper occlusion which are causing trouble, that also should be corrected. And maybe if there is any uh, Candida. Okay, that that will deal in the next point. Okay, antifungal agents uh, like clotrimazole may be used to reduce candida infection. So that is like two weeks uh, of antifungal agents or topical clotrimazole can actually reduce the lesion size. So you might you might wonder why uh, tobacco induced lesion will be uh, treated by antifungal agent like clotrimazole. So it's it's not very surprising. I told you before about a condition called as uh, candidal leukoplakia. So that is proper candidal leukoplakia. But even a normal um, leukoplakia lesion is also rough in surface. Okay, so you can have colonization of candida over that. So when there is candida, there is always nitrosamine production. And uh, you know, even if you treat, the treatment is not going to act properly when there is the presence of candida over there. So the first and foremost thing would be to treat that candida first. So when you actually treat that candida or remove that candida, you can see uh, the leukoplakia actually responds faster to medication. And for that matter, it even you know even without uh, using the normal medication, just with the antifungal agents also it can reduced it can reduce itself okay that is also seen in many cases so you need to treat with antifungal agents for almost two weeks 
okay now coming to uh, periodic observation that has to be done okay so you need to uh, first uh, see for any dysplastic changes and observe the patients for at least six months okay and then yearly ones every month for six months and then yearly ones you need to hold the patient and then when you see that it has reduced then you, you can actually uh, stop observing the patient and ask the patient to discontinue uh, any other medication thank you okay. so uh, you need to observe for any increase in the size of the lesion or change in the appearance of the lesion this indicates that you know there is a, a small tendency towards malignant transformation or you know evolution of the lesion towards malignancy so you need to do a histological examination you might attempt uh, a clinical uh, recher cell investigation before that if you need but otherwise you can just go for a histological examination so uh, if you observe dysplastic changes you know it's always better to uh, go for surgical removal especially when you have uh, pvl and uh, Erthrolucoplakia. Okay, so dysplastic changes. If you see, you need to aggressively treat it using surgical methods. Okay. So medical line of treatment involves antioxidants like vitamin A and systemic, sorry, um, systemic and topical also. And um, this vitamin A therapy, um, it involves uh, both natural as well as uh, synthetic variants also. Beta carotene, ascorbic acid, vitamin E, combination of antioxidants, vitamin A and B, and then lycopene, which has been giving very promising results. Green tea, all these things have been seen. Okay, and vitamin A is very uh, uh, useful because you know it, it helps in proper keratinization of the epithelium. However, uh, this should be used with a little bit caution because you know. In non homogeneous conditions, especially where you have spectral leukoplakia, if you give this vitamin A, it can actually give more trouble. It is a it's a kind of a double edged sword. So it can it, it can you know uh, uh, change this particular condition uh, towards a uh, you know malignant condition. And that can also be seen. So so you need to weigh the outcome. So you need to um, judge the case properly go for only homogeneous case if you see a non-homogeneous case don't go for vitamin A so you need to wear that and then do that and then there are other uh, anti-cancer chemotherapic agents like bleomycin interferon FIFO cisplatin etc and uh, when you have uh, Human papilloma virus association, you can go for antivirals also. Okay. In surgery, you can use scalpel, cryosurgery, electrocautery, laser ablation. And you have this uh, particular modality called photodynamic therapy where you inject a particular uh, uh, dye into the body, okay, into the bloodstream, and it get it gets concentrated uh, at the site of the lesion and uh, you actually shine a particular uh, light of particular frequency on the lesion and uh, this uh, uh, dye uh, disintegrates into certain byproducts and that byproducts treat or uh, help in reducing the leukoplakia okay so this uh, method has also been tried and a lot of promising results have been uh, received okay from uh, various researchers okay coming to the pre-malignant nature and malignant potential almost four to six percent of uh, leukoplakia undergo malignant transformation and uh, most of this is non-homogeneous state so almost all are non-homogeneous state okay so malignant transformation it depends on the face or clinical appearance of leukoplakia as i told you pre uh, leukoplakia or the earlier homogeneous stages don't uh, point towards malignant transformation whereas the non homogeneous types are more prone to malignant transformation degree of dysplasia again uh, more than mild you have severe dysplasia going into malignancy faster and sight the lateral border of the tongue as well as the floor of the mouth are more prone for malignant transformation and compared to the other areas 
sex as i told you female sex due to uh, you know probably due to the hormonal influence uh, causes more um, tendency towards transformation malignant transformation than males okay um, duration again uh, this has been a bit controversial a short durational uh, leukoplakia has also been transferred uh, transformed into malignancy even a long standing one uh, uh, you know after observation for a long long time can suddenly change so this again is a controversial thing habit uh, again depends on what particular type of or uh, form of uh, uh, tobacco you are using as i told you bd uh, can cause more you know uh, malignant tendency than a uh, smokeless one or cigarette for that matter okay uh, then as i told you before you know uh, habit associated or tobacco associated um, leukoplakia is less prone than non tobacco associated uh, leukoplakia towards malignancy you know this is because you know in tobacco associated malignancy we actually know the etiology and the reason we can actually stop the habit and then uh, you know decrease the malignant potential whereas in uh, non uh, tobacco associated leukoplakia you don't actually know what is the real cause of the etiology for leukoplakia formation so you don't have any uh, stop or control over that so there is more chance for that to undergo malignant transformation and respond to le uh, less giving less response to our treatment okay and then size size also then a small lesion can undergo malignant transformation or a large lesion can. but however a large lesion can have homogeneous as well as non homogeneous area so um, there are more tendency for large lesions to undergo malignant then I mean, transformation than small lesions okay clinical features of malignant transformation we need to be uh, you know careful about so this is what you need to uh, look for when the patient comes to you for uh, uh, recall visits okay so development of erythematous or indurated areas erythematous means uh, reddish areas and indurated means a little bit hardened area okay a thickened area this is called as induration so you need to both uh, visualize as well as palpate okay. ulceration with induration areas of speckling so uh, mix of red and white okay nodular areas in the lesion so more than a homogeneous sort of smooth or a thin area if you have nodules or bulbous areas that is more prone to dysplastic changes okay roll borders this is again a very dangerous uh, sign okay roll borders enlargement or change in the pre existing lesion so uh, you know you might observe the lesion being or appearing the same for maybe or five or six months but suddenly uh, next or the next month you can see that there's sudden enlargement so that time you need to be very careful it might be a, a small sign you know, which points towards malignant transformation so these are the points you need to be very careful and you need to know to prevent malignant transformation and so this is the stage when we need to uh, you know look out for a biopsy and then surgical treatment okay so with that i'll wrap up this session on leukoplakia thank you so much for your patient hearing stay safe stay enlightened